Hey everybody, welcome back. Happy Friday. It's good to see you guys. We made it through another week. Yes, we did. Hey everybody. Oh my God, I'm so excited for today's guest. I am thrilled to have Candace on. We're going to talk all about Full House and Fuller House and really dive in to the series that everybody loves so much. Hey Texas. Hey Jersey. Jersey in the house. I see you. Let me grab my guest right now. All right, she's coming in. Hey, everybody. Hi. Hey, Candice. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. Thank you so much for joining. I'm liking the hat and the whole the whole outfit. You're rocking it. Thanks. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's fun to have like quarantine fashion because it's just like chest up. I know. But now I'm like, I need more tops because I feel like I'm going through all of them. I know. <laughs> I know. I have like a lot of a helicopter flying overhead. It's gonna see Natasha if you could shut the door. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for joining the show. So, so Candice, I started this kind of two months ago when everything happened, and I've been inviting, inspiring people on the show who just give joy and hope. And you are somebody. I've actually had a lot of requests to have you on, so I'm thrilled to oh, have you. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, and guys, I know you're super psyched to see Candace. so if you have any questions, I will ask a few throughout the course of the interview, so send them on in. But if you're ready to dive in, I'm ready to chat Full House, Fuller House, all of it. Let's do it. I'm all ready. right, great. So you skyrocketed to fame at 11 years old playing DJ Tanner in Full House. So for you, what were some of your best memories doing that first installment of the show? You know, as a kid, like, I just, the, the cast was so incredible. Like Bob and John and Dave and Lori were so fun and so nurturing. So my best memories really are laughing, just laughing on set. And I had fun with Andrea and Jody, but that was more of like a sibling dynamic. Yeah. So the most laughter was with the adults. Were you registering how big of a show you were a part of as a kid? I mean... Yeah, in the later seasons we did, because the first few years it was like, you know, panned by the critics. But when we would go anywhere, like even when we shot that episode in Disney World, I mean, the fans were everywhere. And I would do a lot of appearances all over North America and people would show up. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. And over the last five years, you've reprised that role playing DJ for the Netflix reboot, Fuller House, of course, which people are obsessed with. I swear, when the announcement came for that reboot, like the internet was set on fire. It was the biggest deal in the world. So for you, what was that like stepping back into the shoes of DJ when, you know, the last time you played her was a kid and now you're an adult yeah. playing her? What was that like? That Oh, okay, first of all, such a gift. Like one of the biggest blessings of my life to go back and reprise DJ Tanner. And it was fun to think about her and like who she would be as an adult. And when the, our executive producer, Jeff Franklin, and the creator of the show was like, I think she's kind of morphed into Danny Tanner. I'm like, of course she did. Of course she did. Because she was always the straight A student, always wanted to do things right, you know, rarely got into trouble a couple times, but she was a pretty good kid. So I'm like, of course, she's a perfectionist. So it was, it was fun. And then when we actually got on the stage and season after season, as we got to play the characters again and really develop them, I'm like, I just let my goofiest side come out in DJ Tanner. So everything that was like mom but extra like extra goofy <laughs> extra silly that's dj and i'm like yes i love this that's amazing and, and what do you think it is about full house and fuller house that just resonates with so many people this is a show that means so much i see it in the comments scrolling by it means so much to so many so why do you think that is yeah you know because as as cheesy as Full House and Fuller House is, it's really a show about family and heart and love. It's about the people that are around you and they don't have to be related by blood either. They're the people that support you through thick and thin. And that's what 
the show means to people. And, you know, I've talked to so many people in so many different countries because our show has such a huge fan base internationally. Both shows do, actually. And, you know, again, and in North America, not everyone grows up in a stable home. And in, in other countries, sometimes the family dynamic is, is difficult or they value family so much that there, there aren't a lot of shows that, that don't cut one another down. And mm -hmm. Full House and Fuller House was always a show that you knew a moral would be taught, we were gonna wrap it up in a bow and we're gonna hug at the end. So people either felt loved from it if they didn't have that at home, or it was a, a, a show that in certain countries, they'd actually allow their children to watch it because it's what they taught at home. Wow, that must have been amazing to see, uh, you know, from country to country and the different yeah. effects it had on people. That's incredible. So yeah. cool. And then, of course, on June 2nd, you come back with the second part of your final season, which people are thrilled about, but also a little sad about. I'm seeing a lot of tears saying don't leave. Um, totally. because it means it means so much to so many. So for you, you get to say goodbye to DJ for a second time. And mm -hmm. I imagine that must have been quite an experience. So what was it like? And then how would you, what, what is this new chapter of your life like as you're saying goodbye to her again? Okay, it was way harder to say goodbye the second time. Really? Way harder. As a kid, I was 18. I had just met my boyfriend who was, soon to be my husband. So like, I was at this great, wonderful transitional time at 18 in my life. So it was not as hard to say goodbye to DJ. But this time, oh my gosh, talk about tears. It was an emotional two weeks. I mean, heavy emotional two weeks. And, you know, she just means the world to me. I love this character so much. And um, we got through it, you know, but I can't wait for the fans to see the show the last nine episodes, I still haven't even seen them, but there's, you're going to, the fans are going to get so much. And I hope that they are like so happy and so in love with the ending. Cause we're finally giving you a proper ending. Unlike full house where I think Michelle like got on a horse and <laughs> like got amnesia. And then like, that was the end of full house. It was like the dumbest thing ever. And, um, <laughs> but this is like a real proper ending. I think that's really exciting to hear. People can't wait for that. And yeah, I mean, I get it. I bet uh, that last day that you were on set when they yelled rap, I mean, was it just like a floodgate of emotion? Yeah, so many times. We, had, we actually stopped and started filming several times because wow. we were all a mess. And I was one of them. And then, yeah, when they, they wrapped it, I mean, my family was all there. My mom, my dad, my husband, Aww. my children. And... Uh, you know, they, everyone just kind of rushed down to the stage floor and there was just lots of tears and lots of hugs and just lots of well done congratulations because to have not only one show but two shows be as successful as these two shows have been um, is not a common or easy thing to happen. And so great memories, you know. Yeah, and it's funny. People are already saying can't wait for the third installment. <laughs> I hope so. Jody and Andrew and I are ready to do fullest house. We're gonna do the Golden Girls version of the show in our <laughs> retirement community. Like I'm so down with it. And I love that. It seems like you guys are so close, you're so tight. And I really think that's one of the reasons, many reasons why the show is so successful. People see yeah. you have a genuine connection. It's, it's from a place of love, right? So how would you describe your relationship with everyone? Exact. I mean, exactly what you said. We are, we're, we're family. I mean, it's over 30 years. We are so close and genuinely love each other. And the great thing is like, we, we all are different people. We don't, we don't all have the same opinions. We don't agree about everything. We, our worldviews are different and yet we are best friends. And that's what, that's what makes the world go round. You know, you love people because of, how they inspire you, they challenge you, and because of your differences, you know, you grow in your character and, and you learn to respect people and, and love people. That's what family is, man. It's, you know, and the bigger, like, the bigger the love, just the more dynamic all the differences can be, you know, because there is so much love, but it just like, 
makes you love one, one another even more. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I'm an Italian from Jersey, so you can imagine <laughs> the different personalities and yes. opinions everybody has. But at the end of the day, we love each other. Yeah, you hug it out. You're like, yeah. you're, everyone's yelling and screaming and hands are flying. Yeah. And you're like, okay, love I love this. you. Yeah, yeah. I love this. <laughs> That's like our family, the Burai family at home. Like my husband's Russian and it's just, and my kids are super dynamic in their personalities and opinionated same thing as your family so we just we like go hard oh, yeah. at the at like the arguments they're not arguments they're conversations but they're yeah. like loud and they're big but then we hug yeah and we're like yeah. Oh, okay it's a great way to be and let me <laughs> squeeze in a fan question there too okay. i see um i think lisa wanted to know what was your favorite episode you ever shot a fuller house my favorite episode, I've said this a billion times, but it's the New Kids on the Block episode. Oh. I mean, that hands down was my favorite just because it was a dream to get them on the original show, which we couldn't. And then they finally came on the on Fuller House. So that was a dream come true. But I do have a couple of other favorite shows. So one is coming in the end of the season and, and it's our finale. I mean, it's major and you're getting a triple wedding. So, you're, yeah, I mean, it's huge. It's That's a epic. huge episode. And one of my other favorites is uh, one that you still haven't seen yet. And my daughter's in it, Natasha. Aww. And she's just like, she's standing right here and she's like rolling her eyes at me. Like, she's what? so darn cute. And Aww. that was like a thrill for me to have my daughter on what has been the most meaningful part of my career, Fuller House and Full House. And I'm sure she was very proud of you. She is. She's nodding right now. <laughs> That's amazing. And another fan question. Where did, um, where did my Lanta come from? Did you invent that? Oh, my Lanta. Well, we know that my Lanta is like, a, I don't even know. Is it a acid? So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, you know what? I didn't like saying, oh, my God on when I was a kid. I, I, and I still don't say that to this day. I, it was, it, you know, was using the Lord's name in vain. So I, anytime it was in the script, I just wouldn't say it. And then I think one day I just said, oh, my Lanta. Like, I think I heard it from somewhere and that became the catchphrase. The producers thought it was hysterical and funny and there you go. I'm still saying it today. That's so awesome. And you kind of gave us a few teases and I know you can't say much, but what's one other thing you're looking forward to in the last few episodes of this show for the fans to see. Okay, the, the wedding, the triple wedding is going to be amazing. And you, we still have another couple guest stars Ooh. and some people that have been on past seasons that are coming back for the, for the finale episodes. So that's really big. Like there's a lot packed and a lot of Easter eggs. So if you really are like a diehard fan, watch those episodes and whether it's in the set or set dressing or in some of the crowds you're going to see people and things that are just a nod to the original show there's a lot of easter eggs in there that's a great tease people are very very excited somebody said it's all it's like the where's waldo a full house uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome and yeah. Kendra, something you said that i really love it it struck me because you don't hear it said so often it's that you know you hope you're forever known as dj tanner and as everybody's big sister so what do you mean by that i you know i've always loved being on the show and it's never anything that i've wanted to distance myself from and you hear that from a lot of actors you know they're like ah oh, that was then i've moved on and this you know i want to be known for whatever and and the truth is, it's such a huge part of my life, and I'm so grateful. I'm so incredibly grateful. And if it weren't for all the fans watching the show and people loving all these characters, like, I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> so right. I, I love who DJ Tanner is. And if that is forever who I'm known for or the character I am known for, I mean, honestly, it, it is like, it melts my heart. It makes me so happy because I have such love and gratitude towards the show. I love that so much. Like you said, you don't always hear actors, you know, paying homage to their characters like that. And the fans are so invested in y'all that it's nice to have that perspective, especially as you wrap something up. Yeah. 
I love that. And an another great thing, it's, it's a show that reaches so many generations. Generations and generations of families watch this. My friend texted me right before this, this chat and said, oh my God, my kids love this show. We're going to be watching for Candace today. And it's so cool to hear that it reaches people like that. So for you, what does that mean? It, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy, crazy that I will be walking on the street and I will have like five-year-olds come up to me and be Aww. so excited. And then I have women and men my age. I mean, I'm 44. And they're like, ah, like you were my sister in my living room. We grew up with you. And then it's like all the grandparents who 30 years ago were the parents with their kids. But it's, it's crazy how it's a multi-generational show. And again, it just, it thrills me to death. And um, I'm just, I'm so happy. So many people have watched it and, and loved it in their heart for so many years. And hopefully we're gonna bring back Fullest House. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. There's not a ton of shows that reach so many people. So it's a testament, not just to the writing and, and the directing, all of the behind the scenes work, but to you guys, because you bring this to life and it's you that people are connecting with. So I must imagine it must feel pretty cool. It does. It's definitely the, the chemistry because we genuinely all love each other. And you can always yeah. feel that when, when, when people do it, it goes from on screen and translates off screen for people when they watch it. And is doing family friendly TV something pretty important to you? Incredibly important to me. I have, that has been um, very intentional for my career. I've always, uh, my, everything I choose and do in my production company and what I develop, it's all family friendly. And that is the space that I've chosen to be in, that it's intentional, because I've always wanted to do programming that not only I feel comfortable with, but that my parents can always watch and my children can always watch and be proud of. So everyone that watches when they know that Candace Cameron Burry's name is on it, whether I'm in it or it's been produced by me, they know they're going to get family friendly television. I love that. Let me squeeze in a couple more fan questions. This was an interesting one, I thought. What was the most difficult episode for you to shoot? Okay, anytime I have to sing. <laughs> <laughs> People love your singing. No, no, my singing is awful. It's bad. And um, anytime I have to sing is like, like the worst. I get a pit in my stomach and I can manage to do it, but it's never fun for me. I'm always like kicking and screaming going, why do you keep giving me more things to sing? <laughs> but you do it and you pull it off. I do it. That's great. And then one more fan question. What have you learned most about yourself during your filming the whole entire series? Oh, goodness. Wow. I mean, it's like been my whole life. So I've learned a whole lot. I mean, I was 10 when I started it and yeah. I have gone through, you know, I'm, I've been married 24 years and have three adult children, but you know, I've, I've grown a lot with it. I directed several episodes of the show as well and and have produced them as as well so there's just so much growth within my career and a lot of that is attributed to the shows and what do you hope the legacy left behind of full house and fuller house is oh just tons of like tons of happiness and love and heart again it is yeah. as much as you can laugh at the show my take my my hope is that your takeaway is that you just have a love for it because it makes you happy as cheesy and silly as it is but knowing that it's just there to to teach good lessons and and make you laugh you know love and laughter absolutely and when people get through that final episode and i'm sure there's going to be a floodgate of emotions that come up <laughs> right these people have been invested with it's, you guys for so long it's going to trigger all my emotions all over again watching it i can't i can't even imagine oh my gosh it. Yeah, the cast and the fans, right? It's everyone's going to be so emotional. So for the fans, when they watch that final episode and, and flick off that TV, how do you hope they feel? I hope they feel sad that, <laughs> that we're not getting a sixth season. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, we're so grateful. We're so grateful to Netflix for five incredible seasons. But um, I hope everyone is so in love with it. But no joke. I hope you're like, Netflix, we need more. Good, good. I think they will. I think they'll all rally around you. And, and lastly, Candice, you're such an accomplished person. You've been in this industry a long time. You've had many highs, some lows, like everybody. And you've been such a role model to so many people in our today. I, I keep seeing comments saying how much people look up to you, and it's really beautiful to see. And you've always maintained such great values throughout your career. But I'm curious to know, what would you give advice-wise to little Candice? What would you tell her? Oh. These are the things that you only learn when you're an adult. Hard to learn them as a kid. But I would tell my younger self to be confident. Like, you, you fake your confidence. Even if you don't have it, just pretend like you do. Because it's the biggest gift you can give yourself is confidence. And it's OK if you fail. Don't worry about failing. Everyone fails. But if you don't have the confidence to try and go out there, then you'll just never know if you could even do it. So don't be afraid. Fake confidence till you fake it till you make it. And um, and then I would say, dream really big, and pray even harder. I love that. I love that. And one last fan question because I've seen this one pop up a million times. You are the <laughs> queen of Hallmark. Do you have anything up and coming this year that people can be excited about? Well, we just premiered this past Sunday, a couple days ago, a brand new Aurora Tea Garden mystery. And um, if you missed it, it's still, it's going to rerun all week and probably throughout the month. So you can always catch that. It's brand new. It's called Heist and Seek. And I have lots of Hallmark movies that are in the making. We just can't make them right now. I was supposed to shoot seven new Hallmark movies this year. And we wow. got... Um, we got shut down during the second one of this year. So anyway, there's lots to come as soon as- Did you say seven? Seven. How do you do that? <laughs> I know it's pretty crazy, but I have my mystery series, the Aurora Tea Garden Mysteries. So we were gonna shoot four of those. And, um, and then I also, and hopefully like fingers crossed, we still do this. I am filming two new Christmas movies this year. Wow. So normally one, but now too. And then I had another movie. But anyway, they'll just roll into 2021 if we can't get them all done this year. That's amazing. By the way, I think we have a mutual friend, Mark Bishop Hill. Oh, yeah. 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 He's a friend. I actually flew to Utah and did a cameo in one of his movies. Oh, he's great. Did? Yeah. I love him. He's so great. Yeah. He's Every great time guy. we're like in the same city or sometimes he's working on a different movie than I've been working on, but we meet up and have dinner. I love him. He's a good guy. Yeah. And lastly, for everybody watching, all your fans of Full House and Fuller House, what's your final message for them in this conversation? Oh my gosh, thank you guys for watching. I love you so much. I see all the fans like Brazil and Japan and India. Like, oh my gosh, thank you for watching. And please, like June 2nd, turn on your Netflix and like let's kill it so everyone just watches all those episodes and uh and and netflix knows how much you love the show but thank you so much for watching june 2nd you guys we're all ready for it candace thank you for coming on it's been a pleasure talking to you you too thank you so much for having me of course stay safe and have a great weekend okay you too bye bye, bye everyone <laughs>